Howdy y'all, it's your favorite trainer with a belt buckle here with the top trainer from Lifetime, Mr. Joe. He's the one who gave me this awesome bottle of whiskey because I helped him save thousands of dollars by getting a refund through the textbook companies. And now look what happens. He's the number one trainer. This is also on our podcast. If you want to become a successful trainer, it's all about the best certification in fitness. Show up fitness. Let us know what you think. Have a great day. Keep showing up. All righty, everybody. We're lucky to have Mr. Joe here from Northern California, not too far where I was born up in Chico. He's in Sacramento right now. And he's going to tell you about his training career so far and how he's moved up to the number one trainer at Lifetime in Sacramento. But before we get to the, the meat and potatoes, Joe, how about you tell everyone the story about this beautiful bottle of welder that you got me and that's probably why you're one of my favorite students so let's start there oh that's it that's the only way to your heart huh whiskey yep. i guess mm -hmm. uh, first i was first i just want to say it is it's an honor to be um on the podcast i'm glad you finally got this going um i am still relatively green in this industry and i do owe I like most of the success i've had to you show up katie travis josh megan all those so I just want to shout everybody out before we even get going that uh, I really appreciate everything you guys have done, uh, which is why I brought you that bottle right there when I came down to a seminar. Yeah, just as a show of gratitude and uh, just like a big thank you for everything that you've done for me and for the industry and everything that you continue to do. And I kind of saved you a little bit of money, though, right? Oh, you saved me a ton of money. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, a ton of money. So I, uh, I was I didn't know if I was like wanting to. Yeah, basically, you told me that I should get a refund for my NASM. And so I had spent like, I think it was 2250 or 2400 bucks. Uh, I don't know exactly what it was at this point. But um, I had like, a week left or something before their 28 days. And so I called them and I got a refund for it. So uh, I was able to save that money, which is huge. There you go. And so you took the basic CPT. And then you realized it didn't do too much for you. So you came down to a seminar in Oakland, you met the crew, Travis and I did that seminar. And then that transitioned into coming down to the Los Angeles one with Luke. And I believe you're going to be there in a couple uh, next weekend too, right? Yeah, I'm excited. I am going to come down there next weekend, which is good, man. If I'm being honest, I've been just like pedal to the metal, dude. I've been grinding really hard, working my tail off. And, um, you know, my education is kind of taking a back seat to just like I get when I get tunnel vision on something, which has been sales lately that's just like what my focus has been here for the past few months. So uh, I haven't really been uh, putting too much time into my education. So I'm excited to get down there, get around you guys, learn some stuff and, uh, and just recharge, man. Yeah. It's gonna be nice. It's really cool to see trainers expedite the process because what you're experiencing right now, others would maybe classify as a little bit of burnout because you're, you're training a lot. You're hitting some big numbers. I believe last month you did almost like $22,000 in sales and yeah it's common, but you see that more in trainers who've been in the industry for two, three years. And so it's really neat again, to see the progress when you are investing in yourself. And that's really key because you're not seeking more specializations. You're getting the hands-on learning. And so I remember we had a talk when you were down in LA and you had a job interview and the job interview actually didn't go the way you planned. And the manager told you that pretty much they're not going to bring you on. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, actually it did go, I thought it went ex it really good, but he just said, I didn't have any experience. I talked to him all about your internship and I explained to him what I'd done and I'd gotten through the level one uh, and I was starting the level two and he just kind of let, I could tell he liked me. He wanted to hire me, but he, he kind of left it at, you just don't have enough experience yet. So once you get through that level two, like let's stay in touch, um, come back and talk to me. Right. So I left there. Yeah. I took the no and I left. Yeah. And so then we were walking around the block at our West Hollywood spot. And I told you, you know, I've been in this industry for a long time and I know what the manager is experiencing. You have someone who you like, but if you look at the statistics, 90% of trainers get a textbook certification and they're going to be like everyone else. They're not going to be able to make it. And so talk to everyone right now. What was that conversation that you and I had and what did I basically force you to do? Yeah, well, I was frustrated and I told you I was frustrated because I felt like I left the job on the table and I walked out of there with my tail between my legs and accepted the no. Uh, and during that interview, at the end of it, everything in me was saying, like, you know, push harder, push harder. But I, I didn't. I left. And so now I've got in the back of my head, OK, I need to wait another few months 
before I might get back in with this guy. And uh, it was one of only two gyms in the area that I wanted to work at. Uh, there, there's Lifetime and there was that gym. They're both the more kind of upper class uh, gyms that actually charge a decent amount for training that you can kind of make a living at. Um, so I told you I was frustrated and I felt like I left the job on the table and you told me to send that guy an email and tell him that um, you wanted, that I wanted to come in and take him through a workout. And if he doesn't like what he sees, then no harm, no foul. I'll pay him whatever his hourly rate as a trainer is. He gets paid for the hour and I learned something. And that's not something that I would normally do. So I thought about it and I went back to the hotel that night before the seminar the next day. And I just, I kind of I said, screw it. I'm going to send the email, send it off. And then he wrote me back and he said, how could I turn down an offer like that? Uh, so he had me back in when I got back into town and then he hired me on the spot. Yeah. And I guess the rest is kind of history. So without that, that, so that's like kind of like springboarded me into being able to get recruited by lifetime because they like to recruit from that gym. Um, so yeah, I mean that was really the the springboard for everything. And it's it's all going to come full circle, and it was cool because after the first day at the seminar, we went out afterwards, had a couple of beers. You must have got that liquid courage to go back and send the email. But I do remember you saying that they hired you, and within a couple of weeks, you became the number one trainer at that gym. I think on the first couple hours, you're like, I don't want to seem like a douchebag, but. I just sold, you know, a package that people who've been there for a long time. Yeah, thirty six hundred dollars. Yeah, thirty six hundred dollars paid in full. I hadn't even been on the floor for an hour, and then to top it off, the guy. So I was talking to one of the other trainers, and he's telling me it's so hard, man. You this and that, and like, you know, and of course I get like a pit in my stomach, like shit. Like, okay, I'm here from this guy who's been here for a while. It's so hard to sell packages. Blah blah blah. Walked around, saw an older gentleman with terrible form doing a lap pull down. I just went up and started chatting to him. And within 20 minutes, $3,600 in training right there on the spot. And so, I don't know, that's kind of how I walked into that gym and it never really stopped from there. And so, yeah, within six weeks, I was the number one trainer at that gym in sales and service. Um, so, so it, why it I, I, love, I love so much of the, the information that Joe has here is because at no point has Joe been a, a victim of the industry. He's constantly investing into things like the prehab guys app. And we have a cool partnership with them. And I remember you sent me a, a message one day and you're like, I got this crazy issue coming in. And I'm like, check out the app, see what happens. And then you text me back and you're like, boom, signed him up for 3,500. <laughs> yep. Yeah. For 1200 a month for that guy. And it's funny. Cause just this morning, I use that app all the time, by the way. So anybody out there listening, it's worth it. Get it. Like if you're training, if you're not training, it's badass. It, that app is amazing. And just today, somebody walked up to the desk and it's like, God, I've been dealing with terrible tennis elbow and you know i just don't know what to do and what you got any ideas whatever and so uh, i'm gonna sign him up once a week and it's just i just use that app and you know i don't I, just full disclosure i'm relatively green to this industry only been doing it for like a year so the physical therapy side of things that's not my wheelhouse but with that app i'm able to have people come up to me like that and feel confident that i can go ahead and i can help them so now i'm gonna have time in once a week we'll run through some of the things that i know from that app i'll give him kind of a homework to do for the rest of the week and then we'll go through the next week and so that's yeah, just a, it's a valuable tool to have as a trainer it's so, it is well so worth the money those that are listening this is also gonna be on youtube i'm showing you right now this is the pre guys app and you can we have a partnership with them with the app and also the medical professionals aspect which is the exercise library so you get like 40 percent off so just make sure to dm me chris at showfitness.com that's my email or on instagram if you want that special discount because it's going to save you a lot in the long term and your roi is going to be huge it's like 300 bucks for the whole year, but you're going to get so many opportunities. And this isn't a pitch for the, the prehab guys. It's just, I hear so many crazy stories of people getting corrective exercise certs that are six, seven, 800 bucks. And what do you get out of it? Nothing. And so that's why I love the the return on your investment is, has paid itself off numerous time and time and time again, right? Oh, it's instant. And then even just so a client that I've been working with now for about two months, when he came to me, he had a really bad tennis elbow. He's a basketball player, said it hurt when he would just shoot a jump shot. It was killing him. Uh, the first day I was with him, I tried to get two 10 pound bumper plates and just have him kind of pinch them and see if he could walk while pinching them and just excruciating pain. Rehab guys app just started running him through those programs. Six weeks, eight weeks later, no pain. He's lateral raising. He's pinching plates. He's doing everything. No pain in his elbow. I mean, it's amazing. It's Love it. Love it. And so Joe is one of these trainers that is constantly learning. And you went to a John Rustin seminar 
And yeah. that's, I think that was a pretty big moment for you as well, because you're a couple months into training here and everyone around you, these are trainers that have been doing this for five plus years. And there's a really cool scene where one of the instructors was going over anatomy and you're like, okay, this is kind of not news to me. And everyone's like, oh my God, it's so crazy. I, I got to write this down. So tell everyone about that story. Yeah, well, she was talking about the 17 muscles of the shoulder and just kind of like, you guys aren't going to believe this. There's 17 muscles in the shoulder region and everybody, not every single one of them. I don't want to discredit. There were some smart people in there, but the majority of the people were kind of blown away and like, holy shit. And to me, at, from going through the internship, that was all just common knowledge, right? How, how do you not know that? You need to know those things to effectively train someone. Uh, and these had been people who have been training years, five, 10 years. Um, so I, I was kind of surprised about that. And it gave me a big boost of confidence as well to be like, okay, I do belong here. Because at, at that point, yeah, I'd been, I think that was, hey, race, I'd been training three months, maybe four, mm -hmm. three months, like actively training. Um, so it was a big boost of confidence there. And I hear so many trainers talk about how expensive it is. I don't have enough money. And then you hear stories like Joe, who goes to a seminar, goes to another seminar, goes to another seminar. And I, I say it, I have it in my book and I've said it numerous times, like that's when opportunities are going to present themselves. And so when you were at that seminar, John Russin's seminar, you met someone who was a lifetime trainer. And then that's essentially kind yep. of where you're at today, right? Yep. That's how I got the job. But let me rewind even to that very first one I ever went to in Oakland. I met a guy there named Kim and he just so happened to be from Sacramento right down the road from me. He worked at that gym Villa Sport that I was one of the two that I wanted to apply at. So through that connection with him, I got his phone number. He worked in like operations or something like that. But I was able to then text him, get the info of the fitness director there, kind of find out a little bit about the guy. So when I went in, I wasn't going in cold. So even the connection there got me the first job. The connection at your seminar got me the first job at Villa Sport in a roundabout way because I had a connection to learn about that fitness director and not go in there completely cold, know who I was going in there to talk to. Uh, so then from there, PPSC seminar, uh, I met a trainer there and she was just kind of telling me, oh, you can do better at Lifetime, whatever. And so I exchanged numbers with her uh, and she gave my phone number to the fitness manager at Lifetime, who I thought, I don't know, I just didn't think I'd ever hear anything back. And he called me about two days later and then they started recruiting me um, like pretty heavily. And it was about a month and a half process because I was doing pretty well at that gym. Right. So it's hard to start over and and, you know, I'd built up a book of clients. I had like 16 clients there already, was training 30, 35 hours a week. Things were good. Uh, I was kind of the golden boy there <laughs> at Villa. Uh, and so it was hard to get me to start back from scratch. But uh, he did. He recruited me. He did not take no for an answer. And uh, I'm glad he didn't because I like it there a lot. So I'm really glad that I made that move over there. Uh, and yeah. so your seminar, the PPSC seminar, basically both of those investing that money, not only did I learn a ton at both of those, uh, just the networking and the connections. That's literally how I got both the jobs at both the gyms that I've worked at so far. So, so spend take the money. Lifetime. Me well, people, like, right. I love that. So that? take me through, take me through lifetime and what it's like training there for those that are listening. A lifetime, in my opinion, is on the same level as Equinox. They're very high end gyms. Training sessions are going to be between about 120 to 160 per session. And you have a team of what, 20, 30 trainers there. We have 23 now. We're trying to hire, I think, three or four more. Um, they've had as many as 40, I guess, which that, that's quite a bit. Uh, but we have 23. We're hiring three or four more right now. Um, and so that's even little things that I'm learning about the industry and how it works. And, you know, you've got obviously your top performers, your lower performers. And um, I was kind of wondering, like, why do we need to hire more trainers? Why don't we just like sell and fill up, you know, the people who aren't totally full, the guys at the bottom? Like, Let's fill everybody up before we hire more trainers. Um, but it's an obvious answer. It's because even the ones that aren't completely booked up training 30 and 35 hours a week, their mornings and those prime hours, like they are pretty booked. So it's like, you always have to kind of keep a surplus of trainers to fill those prime hours or you're not going to be able to place clients with them. So, mm -hmm. uh, I think that we will max out at 30, but right now we're trying to get three more, maybe four more. Nice. And so what's been the biggest hurdle training so far? I mean, we had a couple of conversations before when you were just starting out and it wasn't easy. There was some hurdles there, but now you're crushing it. Yeah, I would say the biggest hurdle at Lifetime, which was different from the other gym I was at, is uh, the onboardings or fit plans, assessments, whatever you want to call them. Basically, your chance to get in front of a member and audition and offer your services. Uh, those are not handed to you at Lifetime. At the old gym, they were. They divvied them out like membership concierge would 
kind of split them up between all the trainers. So you were constantly getting at bats one a week, two a week, sometimes three times a week to sit down in front of members. And you do not, you have to create those opportunities yourself at lifetime. So that was the biggest difference and biggest hurdle in the beginning. Uh, but they do have a system that is in place that helps where you're allowed to kind of create your own workshops. Uh, so it can be for whatever you can do a glute workshop or an ab workshop or a golf fitness workshop, pickleball workshop, whatever you want to call it, whatever you want to do. And then people can sign up for the apps and that gives you a chance to kind of uh, connect and network with members, get your face out there and, um, you know, kind of start building your book of business. So uh, that's, that's how I did it through that. Also through phone calls, through uh, emails, through just, yeah. So it, it's a grind, but. So I, I just, in this inverse world out there, there's has to be a Joe who reads a textbook, gets a certification, gets hired at Equ Equinox Lifetime because they're constantly trying to hire. And it's like, imagine how lost these trainers are today because they don't have access to asking true professionals what they're doing and they don't know their anatomy. They don't have your confidence and they're going to ultimately ask, well, how do I get your confidence? It's, it's not something you just grow overnight. And the foundation of knowing your anatomy and programming helps you so much more where those reps are just going to come so much easier. Whereas someone who's new, it may take you three months at 10, 15% of closing where you're going to start out at that 25, 30, 35%. And then you're going to grow into, you know, closing pretty much every single person because you're, you have that confidence, you know, the value in yourself. Yeah. Confidence in that confidence in your skills as a trainer and your anatomy and all the, the things that you need to know, but also the soft skills being able to, I don't know, I kind of call it being a chameleon. Like you have to be able to connect with a lot of different people and especially in the higher end gyms, you you know, my clients and everyone's clients, they are physicians, they're attorneys, they're CEOs, they're business owners. They are smart, savvy people. And if you aren't confident and you come off like you're full of shit, they're going to smell it out and they're it's you're not going to have a good time. I will just say if you you know what I mean. So confidence is huge. And being able to connect and communicate with, um, I guess, high caliber people is is paramount when you're training in these um, kind of higher end gyms. So if that's something that makes you nervous out there as a beginning trainer, or you don't feel like, I don't know, practice, go cold walk up to people in coffee shops, start conversations, do anything you can, because that's essentially what you're doing at the gym, you're out on the floor, you're approaching people non-threatening right you don't want to be overly pushy or aggressive but you have to get your face out there you have to connect with all the members that's how it is and it's it's um if if that scares you or if you're nervous to just go up and talk to strangers it's gonna to be tough it, it so will be tough i'm at the gym right now i just did a post on youtube curling some 75s and there was some little justin bieber guys they were making fun of me saying that i'm gonna get hurt because my form wasn't perfect. I was doing heavy eccentrics. So let's pretend like I'm at lifetime and I'm doing some heavy eccentrics. Come talk to me. What's that conversation going to look like? If I'd never met you before, I'd be like, yeah. Hey, what's up, man? I see you in here all the time. Uh, what's your name? My name's Joe. And just start a conversation. And it's just going to flow from there. I don't come up with like some script and have it sound forced or anything. I just a genuine connection with a person. I don't walk up the first time I meet someone trying to try to sell them. I just want to connect with you. I just want to know about you. It's, it's as simple as that, man. I, again, I don't have, um, it would be that simple. Like literally, Hey, what's up man? I see you in here all the time working hard. What's your name? So I think that's literally important that for the listeners is to not get caught up in your head thinking that, Oh, I need to correct their form. I need to do this. Like if you are in a situation where a superior tells you, you have to do that, then you have to, if you're doing a role play, then role play, but the just being genuine and just Ask the person a question. How's your day going? I see. I like that. I seen here all the time. Crushing arms. Yep. Hey man, you got some giant arms on you, man. Don't don't wear a tank top. You're making me look bad. It's like have fun with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, and then, it's truly what it is. And then form, of course. Like one of my favorite ways to meet, and it's a lot of times it's older people. One of my favorite ways, as far as form to meet uh, people, it's like nobody like they either don't think about it or they don't know how to set up a leg extension. And so it's like their knees are way out here, and just they have. It's like that's just a really easy way. You see it all day, every day to just walk up and introduce yourself and say, mind if I show you something really quick? It's just, you know, kind of looking out for you here. I don't want you to crack your shin off or whatever. You know what I mean? Uh, that's a real easy one that you see a lot. People don't just set up leg extension, right? So if you're, if, as far as form goes, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it's just genuine conversations. Just, just be interested in 
people and want to actually enjoy the conversation. If you don't enjoy small talk, it's going to be tough for you. If you don't enjoy meeting new people, it's going to be tough for you. So you have to find a way to, to enjoy that. And that goes into the sales aspect of it too. I'm kind of helping out one of the, um, I think I told you there's one of the trainers there. That's fantastic. Dude is smart as hell. He's got like eight certifications, whatever, but dude is extremely smart and he's one of the lowest producing. He's scared of the sales. He does not enjoy the sales portion of it. And so I'm trying to, it's like, you've got to learn to love that, man. You have to learn to get excited about that because we all want to help people. The only way you're going to help those people is if you sell first. So you can, you can help them for free all day, I guess, but I don't think anybody's getting into this to work for free, right? We want to help people, but in order to help them, you've got to sell them. And so that kind of goes along with the confidence and with the um, just enjoying to connect with people. So when you get to sit down with someone for an hour, I don't even worry about talking about the the training at first. I just want to know who they are as a person. What kind of things are they into? Kids, life, things like that. And um, just genuinely take an interest in the people. And it goes a long way. It goes a long way. So what Joe just Sorry, said. Sorry, that was but No, I love it. Because what you said right there was what I have in my new book, which is going to be out here shortly. And it's the three skills that trainers lack. And Joe said he has great people skills, business skills, the trade skills. So Joe, unlike most trainers who just get a textbook certification, he's had the hands-on instruction. He's worked with other professionals. He's continuing to learn the trade, which gives him the confidence. The business comes from being in front of people and having that confidence to deliver your product, which is a great trainer. And the people skills just complement that. And at the end of the day, everyone listening to us right now, Joe included, we want to help people. Well, how can you help more people? Understand that sales is not a big monster. It's just a value proposition. You're telling someone you are not moving well, you're injured, you're overweight, whatever it is, you need me to help you get there. And that's what we're doing. And it's so cool to hear these stories. So you know, I'm proud of you, man. You're, you're kicking ass and you're doing really, really well. And who knows what the future is going to have. Now, for some of those students that are listening right now, maybe they have their certification, maybe they're trying to apply to a lifetime. What would be some pieces of advice for trainers out there who are trying to get hired at lifetime? Um, the interview process, again, it all comes back to confidence. Like they want, when they interview, we'll do a practical and how it goes is you'll be with, um, someone that's in management and you'll be with a personal trainer that's acting as your subject, basically as your client for the day. And we look for confidence. We want you to take command of the session. Uh, you not really, we don't want you to seem nervous. We want you to seem like you've been in a gym before, you know, your way around, um, which, Things like, like what we learned programming on the fly, uh, that's going to come in real handy because this gym's always busy. So if you have something in mind when you're coming in for this practical interview and you can't get on that or you can't do that, uh, you need to be able to transition smoothly. Uh, to get really into the weeds of it, they're going to want to see a dynamic warm up. They're going to want you to go into some sort of a strength uh, portion first, then a hypertrophy portion, kind of finish it off with like a Metcon. If you even get all the way through the, if they see within the first 20 minutes that you're kind of nailing everything, they'll usually just say, Hey, we've seen everything that you see. It looks good. Like, come on, let's go back over and talk, which is what happened with mine, which is a funny story. The CCA that you ran me through in that very first uh, seminar in Oakland with the landmine, it was, uh, it was like a landmine reverse lunge, landmine press, and then like a core hold, like ISO where you're pulling on it. I ran that CCA in both of my interviews with both those gyms. And that's it. I got the job with both those. So thank you for that one. That was a good one. Um, <laughs> Another so bottle that, of whiskey coming my way. That's all right, man. That's <laughs> it. And so I, you know, I use that one with clients all the time, dude. That's like such a good, it's such a good little circuit. Um, I just used it yesterday with somebody. But um, so anyway, yeah, to get into like the real specifics, if you're going in there, they're going to want a, a dynamic warm hitting all the planes of motion and all the checkpoints, uh, a strength phase, hypertrophy phase, a Metcon phase. That's like, at lifetime specifically the dynamic personal training dpt that they're trying to like brand as their own brand of personal training that's essentially the playbook for it so if you come in you're doing at lifetime you hit all those you're golden and so it's good to know the history and i think you said right now currently you guys are like 166 gyms i believe right around there 166 yeah like 165 166 i think there's like a little over 3000 trainers total in the in the company started out at minnesota i believe and the DPT is a whole nother conversation, but that's dynamic personal training. And I, I think I was talking to a, a therapist there, Dan. I'm like, 
someone reached out to me and they said they were a DPT at Lifetime. I'm like, I didn't know they had a uh, doctor in physical therapy there. And they're like, no, that's just the, the title that they're giving the trainers. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> you, you know that they fought, like, lost it. They fought tooth and nail to be able to keep that DPT because of that. Hmm. It was a big deal. Like, there was, I don't want to speak out of school and say there was lawsuits, but I think there were. Like, I think it was a big deal. They tried to fight to keep that because of that was an issue, which, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, there's easy people easy. out there who I just had a call with Mel and she's our nutri- our dietitian on our level two for the nutrition coach. And that's a big issue for people calling themselves nutritionists. And, you know, there's some states you can, there's some you can't. But ultimately, I think you said it earlier, there's trainers out there who constantly seek more acronyms. And it is a pride thing where, you know, if, if you want to stand out in a quote unquote saturated market, you want to have some unique initials after your name. And unfortunately, there's too many textbook trainers. And so then it's like, oh, I'm this type of trainer. Well, so are you. Well, how can I stand out? I'm going to go get another cert. And that's the unfortunate little rat race that we see is you need to take a step back and see why are so many trainers failing? And it's because they don't have the true fundamentals, the principles of movement, understanding overload and the size principle, said principle, anatomy, knowing basic anatomy is so huge because that gives you the confidence if someone were to say something's wrong with my knee, my ankle, my hip, whatever, you have the whereabouts to have a general conversation. And if you have a team, therapist, people you can reach out to, well, you know, that's a great question. Let me consult with my therapist. That gives you so much leverage, whereas too many trainers today try to be a jack of all trades. And so, yep. you know, what are some things that you've seen in your experience with trainers that are not making it? Where are they lacking today? Yeah, I mean, it's it's sales. That's like the number one lowest hanging fruit. That's where people struggle the most that I see. Like I said, a lot of the, a lot of, especially the one guy that I was talking about, there's a lot of people on the team. I don't say a lot. There's people on the team that are, they're fantastic trainers. That they are, they're fine. I would, ha- I would train with them. I have no issues with the way they train. Uh, their science base, their, their science knowledge is good. They're, they're good to go. And it's the sales that they really get hung up on. I mean, like there's one guy that I was helping out and he will do fit plans, uh, assessments, whatever they call them at your gym. Um, onboardings uh and never even present pricing never even offer his services he'll just kind of help them out for an hour and then send them on their way uh that's a big issue (laughs) you know it's it's again i don't like that um that it does come down to sales and i wish there was a way that as a trainer you did not have to sell and there was just a specific team that did that and you know all you had to worry about was training but uh it's the nature of the beast and i i feel like that is the number one weakness that i see um, and it's, it's a hard thing to teach. It's just unfortunate how we proposition it, where sales has a negative connotation. When you, if someone were to say, what's the first thing that comes to mind when you, when you hear sales, it's not going to be a positive thing. It's typically going to be car salesman, or you're going on a, a vacation. You have to sit through that sales presentation. Like, oh, I don't want to be here. Or if you look at it as, why did you get into training? To help people. Okay. You're going to yep. give that person a solution. Always be helping. Yep. And then that's what sales is. So you well, said you want to lose 20 pounds. Pound. Sorry, go ahead. Well, yeah, you said use car salesman or whatever. And that's an analogy that I like to use because to me, it's like, it's easy to sell something that I wholeheartedly believe in and do myself and live that way myself. That's a very easy thing for me to sell someone. I'm not selling you a lemon of a used car or some, you know, it's, I'm selling you something that I believe in. I'm selling you a lifestyle. I'm selling you, I mean, I don't want to be cheesy, but you know, a, a, a new life. You're selling someone a new lease on life. It's so it's, to me, it's very easy to sell something that I believe in so much as opposed to, you know, some used car or a whatever product that you're trying to shill. It's mm-hmm. I love that. So the takeaway is if you want to move up the ranks, you need to have that confidence. You need to be present and opportunities will present themselves. You could say Joe's lucky because he was able to meet this person here or there, or you can take the other side and Joe it has a growth mindset and he's always looking at opportunities to put himself into an environment, which is going to leverage him up. And who knows where you're going to be a year from now, but the more that you put yourself out there, there's going to be so many more opportunities to grow. And so we're really looking forward to seeing you here in uh, less than a week. So we're looking at a week from, will you be here Friday next week? Yeah, I fly in Friday, like 2, 2, 20, 2 30, something like that. There we go. And so have you, did you see Luke before? Did you see this one? What do you mean? Have you met Luke before in Luke Worthington? Yeah, I went to Luke and Tony's last okay, year. Yep. Yeah, so this is a different we... one though, or is it going to be? 
Oh, it's different. Yeah, it's different. So this yeah. one is he's doing day one and then I'm going to be doing day two. And we're going to be going over a lot of our level four assessment that we're finalizing. And so, you know, we're going to choose people to come out and we're going to assess certain, you know, joints and then also work on our sales. And so, you know, putting people into that role-playing situations are going to help them. So, you know, if you're listening to this and you're in the LA area, stop on by the 26th, 27th. Luke is on Saturday. I'm on the uh, Sunday. You're going to meet, you know, great trainers like Joe and you can ask him questions and just really looking forward to seeing you again. But so thank you for taking your time today and make sure if you're listening to this, get into your story, let people know what it takes to become a successful trainer like Joe. He's doing it in less than a year. You're kicking ass, man. I'm proud of you.